All right, I think I'm on. Uh, there's a fair amount of delay from my camera to what I'm seeing, so uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. But uh, yeah, we've got a lot to talk about, so I'll hang out for a little bit. Oh yeah, you guys can hear me. All right, I've got the comments down here, so I have my I'm using my A7 obviously as um, a webcam, and I have my laptop down here, so the quality is a lot better than last time we done a live stream. Uh, hopefully it's looking pretty good. Um, man, we have heaps to talk about. So much stuff has happened this weekend, even this week. But uh, can one of you guys comment if you can hear me pretty good on the microphone? Let me know. Um, man, big weekend. <coughs> Is the volume all right? I got a bit of a cough as well, so. All right, here we go. So this week has been huge. Um, I've done, I have another wedding tomorrow. So here in New Zealand, it's uh, 11 a.m. on Sunday. And um, yeah, we I had done my first wedding on Friday, and then we had one yesterday, and then I have one on uh, Monday as well, tomorrow. And I have an engagement shoot tonight. I had a meeting with some clients this morning, so it's all looking up, things are getting busy again, and it's all looking great, but we've had a whole bunch of changes with um, uh, equipment and gear, um, so one of the biggest things I wanted to talk about today, and if you guys have any questions for me, is about the A7R4s, so uh, I've got here my R4, I bought two of these, so my issue was I was shooting on two A7R3s and an A7 III was my dedicated YouTube camera, which is what I'm filming on now. Um, and I decided quite a while back to, uh, you know, like but when over lockdown, I was going to sell one of my A7R, oh, I was going to sell both of my A7R3s and uh, upgrade to the R4s. And then I kind of changed my mind and there wasn't much work going on. So I just kind of, um, I don't know, I just things got stagnant and I didn't bother so then I went into Auckland Camera Centre which is my local that's where I always go and buy all my stuff and <clears throat> uh, I originally was going to buy a Sony a7c and just have that dedicated to my YouTube videos and uh, use my a7 Mark III and my a7R III for wedding work and then when I went in there I just wasn't really feeling the a7c it's good good camera for YouTube and stuff but um, you know it's uh it wasn't the best so long story short i just decided to go all in it was like a last minute decision so i traded in my a7r3 my remaining one and i bought two brand new a7r4s um so today i'm going to talk about what i like and what i didn't like and why i chose to upgrade probably the biggest thing uh that i want to touch on first is that it's definitely not a necessary upgrade it's you know it's an incremental upgrade, but a lot of the things are really enjoyable. Um, so yeah, I want to talk about that. Other things, I obviously bought the Sigma 35mm 1.2, um, and I've really been loving it. But I have noticed one funny issue. It makes my A7R4 lock up sometimes, and it's definitely not the camera because I've tried it on both units, and it only ever locks up. I had it like lock up three times. I had to take the battery out. Uh, and, and three times in one day and it was all with the 35 more and then when I went back to my 24 it didn't happen again so I don't know what's up with that it's kind of annoying but we'll see I'll do some Google research when I've got the time and figure it out but I'm not selling my 24 mil at all so that's not going anywhere um, what else Fuji <laughs> sent me I totally forgot about it but Fuji has sent me a whole kit to play with and review so I, I had two xt 4s 16mm 1.4 a 35mm 1.4 and a 56 1.2 and they sent me an entire kit so <clears throat> I guess maybe we'll shoot a wedding on those and see how they are uh, but I'll do a separate video on those and you guys can um, let me know if you have any questions on that and what else gear wise um, a lot of you guys know also I had a X100V um, I ended up 
when lockdown hit, this is quite a while ago now, uh, when lockdown hit, I freaked out and I sold a bunch of stuff because I thought the business was going to get really bad. Turns out it's fine. We're pretty lucky here to be in New Zealand. So I sold the X100V and I bought a, just the other day, I bought a used X100F. Um, and it's honestly, it's basically the same. The only difference really is the, the flip screen. Otherwise, it's totally fine. So I've been using that for all my personal work and stuff like that. Uh, let me just check the questions i see lots of highs hey guys what's up um <coughs> excuse me uh, oh the uh, 85 mil 1.4 sigma i've been loving that it's haven't had any any issues with that image quality is amazing um it's just a really fantastic lens faster focusing i don't regret switching that out for the g master at all um the g master was great i thrash that i've probably shot 100 weddings with that lens and it was always always really good never had an issue with focus or anything like that it was just a bit slow um but yeah the sigma 84 85 1.4 dg dn i'm really loving as well and yeah otherwise things are pretty much the same i've just switched my bodies out um i can't i tried to get lightroom working on obs studio like to stream through youtube but it's just not working. So um, I've got a few images to show you from the weekend. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll just have a chat. So <coughs> lots of good questions coming in that I was going to touch on. Um, so let's just get straight into the A7R4 and the reason which is why it upgraded. <coughs> Guys, sorry about my voice. Um, so a7R4. The, the worst thing I don't like about this camera, like the the very, if there's a list of things that I like and list of reasons why I upgraded, the the very bottom of the list is 61 or 60, whatever it is, two megapixels. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. I wish it had small raw, but uh, I know a lot of guys are going to say, you know, why would you buy the R4 if you don't want 60 megapixels? Well, uh, the reason why I don't, you know, I would have bought the A9 II, but it doesn't have any picture profiles, which is really frustrating because you guys know I do a lot of video. Um, and, you know, I wasn't going to wait for the A7 IV because here in New Zealand, it's just coming into summer. So wedding season is just starting. So, yeah, it's been a bit of an issue, but <clears throat> the files are big. I'm using compressed RAW, so they're about 61, 62 megabytes each. But I'm still using RAWZ, which was called Dot Photon RAW. Uh, you know, back I think they updated it and changed it, so that's been working great. So without that software, I don't think you know these would be really frustrating in terms of memory card storage and uh, hard drive storage. So, but if you guys don't know what RAWZ is, I've done a video on it. I'll put it in the description after when this video is on YouTube. Uh, it just compresses the files even more and you you lose no quality. It's amazing. So it takes the files from about 61, 62 megabytes each to uh, about 20 megabytes each. So it's just a huge amount of storage. And I've put them side by side with the R4 files with the, you know, compressed in-camera files and the RAWZ downgraded, even more compressed files. And there's no difference at all. They edit exactly the same. Um, so really happy with that. <clears throat> so the, the next things, the reasons I upgraded was all the kind of usability features. So, uh, mostly the grip is much nicer. I don't feel like I have to have a little finger grip on the bottom of it. Um, I have ordered some, I've ordered the Miki grips from Amazon. I ordered two of them, so they'll be here and we'll just, you know, they're not very expensive. So I just ordered two, see how they feel. Uh, but straight off the bat, you guys know I always banging on about how big my hands are, and um, you know these feel really great even without the grip on the bottom. Uh, so I'm stoked with that. Having a better viewfinder, it's not massive. I mean, it is definitely better than the R3, but I don't notice a crazy amount of difference, even though I know it is quite a bit better. Um, and just everything is just nicer. The buttons are nicer. The exposure comps nicer. The SD card, like. These things make a big difference when I'm shooting, you know, 45 weddings a year. It's the usability things that really get me. Um, another one was the red focus dot. 
you know, we, the ability to, to be able to change it to red or white. Um, with the A7R 3 obviously it was black and it just made it a little bit hard to see where my focus point was in some situations. But having the red focus point is a game changer. I really love that. Uh, the other thing was the real-time tracking. I've seen a comment about the real-time tracking. Um, honestly, I think 90% of the time it's really great. It's kind of, you almost don't need back button focus with it, but it's still better with back button focus in my opinion. And yeah, so the, if you guys, I'm going to make a video on real-time tracking. So, you know, obviously this is live. I can't show you a whole bunch of stuff, but um yeah real-time tracking is really good i just found like 10 percent of the time it was it would kind of jump around and change to something i didn't want it to focus on um, but most of the time it's really great <clears throat> in terms of actual f uh, focus performance compared to my r3 i don't notice a huge difference it's definitely a little bit better but it, you know i never really had shots that were out of focus on my r3 anyway um, i guess just the real-time tracking makes it a little bit more efficient to focus and compose my images because I can just kind of point it in the middle like I'll leave my focus point in the middle lock it on and then I can you know move the frame around and it just doesn't generally lose it unless you know I had an Indian wedding yesterday and everybody was dancing and going nuts and then it was kind of jumping around all over the place but yeah you know you've got to uh, adapt a little bit um, battery life I found really good so the wedding on Friday was uh, it was like nine almost 10 hours and I just used two batteries so like one per camera I never had to change them out so that was really great I shot about 3,000 photos between the both cameras um, and yeah I mean they're really expensive units you know you guys have to remember when I'm talking about this stuff and I'm doing I know a lot of YouTube reviewers are just kind of you know they have a job and then they do YouTube and review stuff and um, you know a lot of great channels out there but when i'm reviewing gear and you know i'm talking about the price and stuff you have to remember that i am a full-time photographer and you know it's this is a business expense it's it's like a builder buying a new skill saw you know what i mean it it um it's just a necessary upgrade um yeah let me just check the comments um Shot my first wedding with the R4 AF. Yep, it's really good. <clears throat> um, oh yeah, low light. I did want to touch on low light. Um, I haven't gone through and edited all the weddings yet, obviously, but um, I had a photo here. Let me change. So, let me see. So this was the Saturday wedding. And... This photo, let me see if I can make it bigger. Hopefully, you guys, you can see on YouTube properly. But this is 12,800 ISO. Um, you know, it is it is noisy. This is on the R4. But it's, it's totally fine, eh? It's really, you know, 12,800 ISO for that is pretty good. Um, and the other thing is because I'm exporting my images at 5,000, well, usually I do 6,000 on the long edge. Um, you know, that's almost half the resolution of what the camera is. So what happens is your, oh, hang on. Can you guys see that? <clears throat> um, one second. Not used to this OBS studio. That's better. Sorry, guys. Teething issues. Um, so, yeah, let me just zoom in again. So, yeah, 12,800 ISO. It's really it's really fine, honestly. Um, definitely noisy, definitely grainy, but whatever. You know, like it's, it's going to print fine. Um, and it was quite dark here. It looks bright, but there was no light. I didn't have a light on them or anything. This is just their, their faces are just lit up from a bit of ambient um, you know, light from the venue. And the fairy lights above them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let me get back to the other screen. 
uh, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm exporting my images at a smaller resolution and, uh, you know, so the grain is a lot smaller on the final image. So when you zoom into a hundred percent on the exported JPEG, you're not zooming into a hundred percent, you know, you're only zooming into like 50%. Um, so if that makes sense, your grain doesn't look as bad as it actually is. Um, definitely not as good in low light as the A7 III or the A9, even the R3 I think was a little bit better, but honestly 12,800 ISO, if I'm happy with that, I don't really, I'm not fussed at all, it's fine. Um, yeah, so that was uh, low light, let me just check the questions again. Philbert was saying, uh, do you think the 35 is, 1.2 is worth it with respect to the size? Um, <laughs> it's close man, like it's a really, this 35 is huge, like it's such a big lens for a 35, but the image quality is amazing, like it's probably, it's easily the best 35 I've ever used in terms of optics, it's just the size is kind of heavy, but you know, I'm a big guy, and it's easier with the A7R4 grip for sure, uh, but I do still love my 24, so I'm using that a lot, um, but I do think the 35 is a really fantastic uh, one lens kind of thing. So like my engagement shoot tonight, I'll probably just take the 35 1.2 and one camera. Like I never take two cameras on an engagement shoot. Um, you know, it's just, I don't feel like I really need to. Um, yeah. What else? <clears throat> uh, Jess was saying, just got onto your YouTube channel and my question is, is it necessary with all those pixels? No, like I said, I don't want all the pixels, you know, that's just kind of a something that I didn't like about this. the only thing I didn't like about the camera was the megapixels. If they had small raw, you know, obviously I'd be stoked. I feel like with for wedding photography, like between thirty to forty megapixels is amazing. It's really all you need. Uh, I'm a lot of people say, you know, it gives you heaps of power to crop and stuff, but I just don't. I just don't crop. Um really the only cropping I'm ever doing is if I am straightening my image. I don't know why. Um, I guess I just, you know, I have a lot of practice. I've done almost 300 weddings now and the, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just tend to just shoot how I want it to look in camera and it's all fine. Um, yeah. So megapixels, not really keen on that. Uh, Uh, hey Chris, noise difference R3, R4, like I said, R4 is a little bit worse, but hardly, like it's totally fine, um, yeah, really happy with that. <coughs> um, I had some more images, so I can uh, show you some of those, here we go, um, so these are all from that wedding, uh, they were, this is with the uh, 24 mil, one point. 1.4 um, just a really fantastic lens eh? these were just really quick edits I just gave the couple um, shot with dad in the car before they walked down the aisle you guys might have seen some of these on Instagram as well you can see the dynamic range is still pretty amazing um, this was shot at 6400 ISO uh, it was quite dark in the limo like it had really dark tints and it's not really grainy um, focus was really good for this kind of stuff these were shot at 1.4 um, I got a whole range of um, shots from that just bursting it so yeah really happy with the focus overall on the R4 and dynamic range you can see here is uh, really great it's such a cool bridal party we had heaps of fun um, really good time um that was the couple, Mike and Lauren. This was the 35 1.2. It does give you, see the thing is it gives you a really special kind of look that you don't get from a 1.4. It is quite a noticeable difference um, being able to stand further back and still, you know, it's the closest thing to that kind of medium format look. I hate that term, but, you know, it does give you a pretty special look and it's super sharp. Um, all the way to the edge of the frame like I really like composing stuff uh, like this um, you know with the couple down in the bottom of the frame and even at 
even at 1.2 if they were down there in the frame it would still be super sharp so um yeah just love it these guys had their own so they did their vows at the uh they did their vows and the in the ceremony like just kind of standard vows and then we went down the beach i took my four wheel drive and we drove down the beach and they did their own vows uh just their own personal vows i didn't even hear them <laughs> um but it was really special they really loved it and i had a great time and then we popped a bottle had some fun got some more photos on the way back she had this cool leopard print jacket she wanted to get some kind of styly photos with that so we had woodhill forest in the background there and uh yeah it was a really sweet wedding um the one on uh let me change back so the wedding on <clears throat> the wedding yesterday wasn't actually my client um uh, one of my friends another photographer i know called uh you might know them they're called chase wild here in new zealand uh, he was stuck in germany so uh he couldn't get back over here to shoot the wedding so i shot that for him on on his behalf and that was a really cool one as well uh, i just don't really want to show any images from that because it wasn't my wedding you know it was his client um so uh, maybe you guys will see some of those tomorrow's wedding's really cool it's over on waiheke island uh, and i'm shooting with jonathan suckling one of my good friends he's hilarious uh, and I'm doing video only for that. So I'm going to be doing video with the R4s. So that's going to be really interesting. Uh, really excited to do that as well. Uh, what's we got in the comments? Um, how you find the R4 for video? Yeah, well, I've done a little bit, but... <coughs> <coughs> but I'll tell you that uh, I'm going to make some videos next week. So a lot of videos coming with the R4. Um you know going over the real-time tracking i'm going to record the back of my screen and stuff and sh uh, go through a setup video i'm going to do some video um so yeah that'll be really good uh, eric don't know if it's been asked but uh lower light yeah i uh, just mentioned that before <clears throat> um do i have problems shooting at 1.2 in daylight uh yeah sometimes it's too sometimes it's too bright but uh you know i've just i've only really had to stop down to like f2 if i wanted to um but yeah quite often a bit of, a bit of cloud will come by or something and it's all good do i think the uh jonas said do you think this dice batiste lens is a good enough for 61 megapixels <coughs> um the zeiss batiste lens is a good I had the 25 mil f2 I shot that for quite a while on my r3s uh, I think a whole wedding season at least and <clears throat> I did really like it great focus lightweight they are sharp the only thing with the Batiste lenses is they have I mean particularly the 25 it has really really bad chromatic aberration um, but yeah I think they're fine for 61 megapixels you just have to kind of watch out for that aberration um, can be a bit of a problem um yeah what else do we want to touch on um yeah not much really i mean the r4 has been great um i have noticed other things like the menu system and like going in and out of the menu works a little bit faster like it's not quite as laggy um i think the rear lcd screen is pretty much the same so i'm not seeing a huge benefit there but it's way better than the a7 mark iii so um yeah uh, eye focus has been really good i i find like i didn't have my you know originally i have af on and the ael button set to eye focus uh, and I still have that set up on here, but I find with the real-time tracking, I don't really need to do that. Like, I don't really need to use the AEL button um, because the real-time tracking just kind of just kind of works really well with that. Um, and the joystick is really nice as well, so, like, moving the focus point around is much easier. Uh, I did find, like, you guys probably know, if you've been following along my channel for quite a while, I shoot aperture priority a lot uh, when I'm doing weddings. 
and this R4 obviously has the lock for exposure compensation. Um, I do find this one is easier to bump when it's not locked. Um, so, and, and because I use it so much, I find myself having to lock it and unlock it, but it's not really a big deal. Uh, but the other dials are way nicer. Oh, I just remembered something as well. Before, when I was saying the 35mm 1.2 was, um, you know, it made my camera freeze up. Uh, the other thing I really noticed, which was quite weird, um, there was a little bit of a delay when I pressed the shutter with the A7, uh, with the 35 1.2, when I pressed the shutter, it there was a very, very slight delay, but it was just noticeable. Um, I noticed it because when I put my 24mm back on, it was much faster to hit the shutter. Um, and I have my focus in the menu set to release, so it's not waiting for focus or anything like that. Um, so that was really interesting. So I think it's maybe just a clash of firmware with like the 35mm, because I don't have any of those issues on the R3. Um, but you know, something to note, I just wanted to touch on that as well. Um, what else? Uh, I am using the uh, Extreme Pro, Sand Ex Extreme Pro UHS-1 card in the second slot. Um, that could have been, you know, that that's maybe slowing the camera down a little bit, but um, in terms of burst mode, I, even, I either have it on low or medium. I never have it on high. Uh, I just find it's too much, and I, I take too many shots by mistake. Um, so, yeah, I'm probably going to upgrade to UHS-2 cards for the bottom as well, though. Um, oh, bro, I can't. Honestly, I don't even want to try and pronounce your name. You know who you are, but you were just saying, do you see yourself changing to the A7 IV when they release those? Um, <clears throat> probably not. Just because it's a another big investment, I don't want to lose too much money. Um, if they come out with something that's like real game changing with video, I'll probably do that. I'll probably buy one at least. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with these. I think the A7 IV will be killer though. Like if you guys are thinking about upgrading and you want to wait for that, I think that's probably a smart move. My mate Johnny is upgrading. Um, well, he's thinking about, he's on Nikon now and, and thinking about switching to Sony. And I was saying to him, if he doesn't want to go for the R4s, probably best to wait till next wedding season and get the A7 IVs. I think they're going to be a, I, I think that camera is going to be a game changer for the industry. It's going to be a really good price and have basically everything this does. So stoked with that. Um, let me just see what else we've got. <clears throat> Uh, are there any lenses that aren't yet for Sony E? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Maybe clarify that question. Uh, is the new A7S an option for you? Yep. So I am going to I am going to buy an A7S three. Uh, that'll be replacing my A7 Mark three, which I'm filming on now. So it's all in a rig and a cage. And I have it with like an Atomos Ninja recorder, which is a way getting serviced at the moment because the calibration is way off. So I have that all rigged out with a V-mount battery and everything like that. Uh, I can't show you the setup, but you guys have seen it in my other videos. Um, what's up, Philip? <clears throat> so I am going to be eventually, I need to save up a little bit more money. Um, you know, wedding season's kicking off now, so I'll start getting paid again soon. Um, so I'll trade my A7 III in for an A7S III. Uh, I'm going to dedicate a lot more time to YouTube um, you know, over the next year or so. Uh, I want to do a few less weddings. You know, I've been doing 40 to 50 weddings a year for the past kind of four or five years now. And um, I, wanna, I still really love it. I'm not going to stop doing weddings. I really enjoy it. But I want to kind of do a few less, like maybe 30 weddings a year and just kind of be a little bit more fussy with what I'm shooting. And uh, I want to dedicate a lot more time to YouTube. I don't make a lot from the ad revenue, but um, you know, it definitely doesn't pay rent or anything like that. Uh, but you know, I really enjoy it. And you know, I feel like I'm helping some people. So, you know, I'm stoked with that. And the preset sales that you guys are buying support the channel a lot as well. So I'm really thankful for that. And yeah, I just want to dedicate a, f a bit more time. So um, I'm still trying to decide on who I'm picking, but I I put the word out a little while ago uh, for an assistant to come and do behind the scenes videos. 
um, like wedding film school you guys have probably all seen that channel so i want to do something more like that just have a guy come along and, and dedicated to um you know filming behind the scenes for you guys and i'll probably start a patreon channel um with like you know do like weekly chats you know one-on-one -on -one, like skype uh zoom sessions with you guys to help um answer questions or anything like that so um yeah i'm looking forward to that lots of behind the scenes videos um do you guys have any other questions before we wrap this up um uh, jonas clarification what lens would you want sony to release um i know i just bought the sigma 35 1.2 but if they bought out a real nice you know g master 35 1.4 that was smaller i'd probably sell this and get that um and what else would i like um then there's a lot of lenses out at the moment like there's really not much that i'm kind of missing um what have i got 24 a new 50 maybe like a g master 50 i think a lot of people would like that so i'm still using the 55 uh, i have really no issues with it but a g master 50 would be great um yeah i don't really feel like i ever need anything longer than 85 a lot of people say how can you do weddings and not have a 70 to 200 um lots of people don't use a 7200 and i just i'm not a fan uh yeah so we're pretty happy with the lens lineup at the moment i am pretty interested to see these fujis and how they go so if you guys have just joined the chat uh, fuji sent me a whole kit so i have uh two xt4s a 16 mil 35 mil and a 56 mil um so i'm gonna have a play with those and do some video and just see how i um see how i like it um i wasn't really really considering switching I, I kind of went through a phase a little while back where i was just getting really frustrated um just, i've been shooting the sony's for ages and i just felt like i want something new to mix it up um so i was looking into other systems and i just couldn't find anything that even comes close to what i'm to what i get from the sony's just performance wise they're just so far ahead in the game that you know there's just nothing else that comes close um a lot of people say there is but i think if you really invest the time to try them out it just it's just a game changer um i was playing around with the xt4s last night and the first very first thing i noticed was the af on button and is, is in a really awkward position for me um so that would be a, a pretty big issue um but i am keen to see how the video is because it does look really nice and the thing with fuji that i like is that they're fun to use they're really nice cameras they're really kind of um tactile like I, that's what i love about my x100 it's just you know it's just so small and, and all the dials and everything it's just way more fun to use than my sony's so like i never pull my sony's out for um you know doing taking photos of my kids or anything like that unless i'm testing a lens out um so whenever i go anywhere i pretty much take this x100 with me everywhere and anything that i do on my personal facebook or whatever is usually on that um yeah let's have a look uh a7r4 fits perfectly in the same small wood quick release cage oh yeah sweet javier is it javier it says uh do you use the 24 35 and 55 mil inside <coughs> So my lens choices usually goes like this. Um, before I bought the 35, I would just use three lenses, 24, 55, and 85. And uh, I'd use the Tamron 17 to 28, which I, I just use that for like dance floor and group photos, that's it. Um, so what I do is in the morning when I'm doing the girls getting ready, I shoot 24 and 55, and that's perfect. 90 percent 24 mil i just use 55 if i want to get like a close reaction or i'm kind of standing back and trying to get something and, and just single something out uh, and then when i get to the ceremony i switch to 24 and 85 and i mostly use 85 and just you know getting reactions a few wide shots with the 24 and then for the bridal shoot i switch back to 24 55 again mostly using 24 mil uh, if you guys have a look on my website you'll see probably almost all the images if it's any wide shots it's with the 24 mil and there's very not much 
closer shots in there. Um, and then for the reception and the speeches, I used the 85 and the 24 again. Uh, lately, I've been, you know, obviously I bought the 35, so I've been using that uh, more. Um, the wedding on Friday, I used the 35 heaps for the bridal shoot, and it was great. I just really like having that freedom of being able to expose, you know, I like that negative space kind of look. So I like the freedom of being able to, to shoot at 1.2 and still, you know, compose people right in the bottom of the frame or in the corner and have a really clean image still. Uh, I do like that. The 24 sometimes was a little bit annoying. Um, I think maybe my 24 has just been thrashed and it's it's degraded a little bit but it, it's not very sharp right in the bottom of the frame and in the corners at 1.4. I feel like it was definitely better when I first bought it and started doing reviews. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I only use the 85 for the ceremony and the speeches. I'm really not using it for anything else. Um, yeah. Uh, ben, do you have any recommendations on how to get started with second shooting weddings? <clears throat> That's a good question, man. Um, getting started, the probably I, I I get asked to second shoot a lot. I have I get so many emails from local people asking me to uh, second shoot with me, and a lot of them go about it the wrong way. They're like, you know, I want a second shoot for you. Just normal pay is fine, and uh, you know I really need a portfolio, and that's just not how it works. Uh, not for me anyway, and not for most people I know. Uh, if you're second shooting for me. You know, usually you get paid like 50 bucks an hour or whatever, but you don't get to use images for your social media. That's not how we, uh, you know, that's not how this kind of functions. Um, you know, these are my portfolio, it's my clients, and I don't want everybody else sharing them. So what I would do if, you're, if you haven't shot weddings before and you want a portfolio, I would suggest what I did at the start, I didn't really second shoot a lot, but I did ask a few people if I could come along and second shoot and if they were happy with the photos, uh, you know, just don't pay me and let me use the images for my portfolio and for my website and whatever else I want. Uh, and that was a really good way to get a head start. Um, but you have to go in way more humble and just, you know, it. You know, a lot of people say you shouldn't be working for free and you know, if you've never done a wedding before, I don't really see it as you're working for free. As long as you're getting a portfolio, then you're. it's more like you're buying a portfolio, if you know what I mean. If you're working for free and not getting anything out of it, that's just kind of silly. Um, but, you know, going along and learning how people control the day and all that is really important as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, second shooting is a really good way, but don't just automatically expect that you're going to be able to use the images uh, that you take on someone else's wedding. Uh, TW, if you don't like the 7200 as the 135 G Master option, uh, yeah, <coughs> I did think about buying the 135. I tried it out at a few weddings. Um, yeah, you know, when I was sponsored by Sony, I'm not anymore. I left the program. I've talked about that in other videos. I uh, just felt like it was better for YouTube, and I, they weren't really doing anything for me, to be honest. Um, I borrowed gear all the time, so I shot the uh, I used the 135 at a few weddings, and it's amazing lens like in terms of optics and focus and everything it's fantastic but um i just didn't 135 is still too tight for me uh there's not really many situations where i need it especially with the a7r4s now where i can use my 85 and use crop mode i pretty much have a 135 anyway almost and um you know i'm still it's still massive resolution um so yeah i just don't really feel like i need it i think 130 70 to 200 is a great lens for like you know maybe sports or like commercial work or something like that. I just really don't, I'm not a super big fan of the look and the size of it. Um, like, you know, I've seen people, the 7200 is way bigger and heavier than this 35mm 1.2. And a lot of people that have complained about the size of this use a 7200. I'm kind of like, well, you know, I know it's a different focal length, but I don't know. I don't get it. Um, do you plan on trying the Z6 II? <clears throat> nah. So I switched from Nikon to Sony, and I was really hoping for Nikon to come out with something awesome. Um, and my mate Johnny is on the D on Nikon. Like I said, he's going to probably switch to Sony. And when the Z6 II came out, it was just kind of like, it's hardly even an upgrade, um, in my opinion. Like, great camera. Um, you know, 
it's just the way they work and you know i have shot with the z6 and the focus is good but it just the way it performs i don't really want to get into it too much i've made a video about it if you search z6 versus sony focus system i've made a pretty good video about that um but yeah, I'm just really not a fan of where Nikon are going at the moment, which is a real shame because I I, know, I don't want to switch to Canon. Ever, you know, I never thought about that either. Um, but I would really like Nikon to do well. Um, they just haven't bought anything out that's like real game changing in, in years. Um, when I switched, I was on a D750 and a D810, and they were amazing. I I loved them. I never really had an issue with them. Just when I switched to Sony, you know, I used one at a wedding, and that eye focus just blew my mind. Um, so yeah uh daniel how is the tracking on 85 sigma yeah it's great it's real fast way faster than a g master um works really good really happy with it um okay exactly to get started second shooting for free is what i did yeah yep <clears throat> uh what is the major th turn off for the 35mm 1.8 great question man there is no turn off honestly it's a fantastic lens I shot it for ages it's you know I still think the 35mm 1.8 is the best overall lens it's the best all round lens the best all round 35 for Sony out of all the ones you can get which is quite a lot now um, the 35mm 1.8 I think is the best overall when you talk about image quality value size um you know focus everything the 35 mil 1.8 is still my best pick uh, just the 35 mil 1.2 is better optically and it gives you a really interesting look and i you know you guys know me youtube is my thing and i'm a wedding photographer so buying gear isn't too much of a problem um you know it's kind of all i can all write it off tax wise so i just wanted to try it out but yeah the 35 1.8 is great never had an issue with it at all um honestly can't really complain about it uh, it does have some distortion but it's so does the sigma the, you know most of them do it's easy to fix uh what else picking up an ultra r4 <laughs> yeah you guys picked up on that do you think the megapixels on the r's are worth it compared to the three <clears throat> no i touched on this before but I hate having 62 megapixels. Or, I, I don't even know. Is it 62 or 61? I hate having that many megapixels. If I was a landscape photographer or a commercial photographer, I'd be stoked with it. Um, but I, I still even then don't think it's necessary. It's probably nice to have, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, and like I said, I'm using Rawsy to compress the files, and that's just a game changer, man. So the wedding on Saturday... When I after I imported all the files and everything, just from my two cameras, I had like I said about two and a half to three thousand photos, and I was a it was about one hundred and sixty gigabytes worth of images. After I compressed it, it was like sixty gigabytes, and I'm not losing any quality. I I stress test my stuff so hard to try and find a difference, you know, bringing shadows like just extreme things that i would never usually do on a on a wedding edit and still can't see a difference so um if you, I, I don't understand why aren't people more aren't i don't understand why more people aren't using rawsy to be honest uh, honestly look it up and search for it it's just such a great piece of software i think it's about a 100 bucks um actually i do have a discount code they emailed me i haven't actually looked at the email yet but they sent me a discount code and i'm not getting any money from them they're not sponsoring this i'm not um you know i'm not like an affiliate link uh maybe they're going to offer that i don't know but um you know i just honestly i paid for it as well um, i used a discount voucher from james day and uh you know it's so great i love it um definitely look into that um <clears throat> ed was saying uh 7200 versus 135 uh if i if i did felt feel like i needed more um more reach i would definitely go 135 over 7200 all day i just am not a fan of 7200s it's just totally personal preference though the 7200 g master is a great lens don't have any issues with it <clears throat> i just way prefer having prime lenses 
TWG print photos for customers on your own printer. Um, I used to. I actually sold that Canon printer to my friend. Um, it was just too much of a hassle, like printing and then sending it out on my own. So now I go through Queensbury uh, here in New Zealand. I think they print internationally as well. They're quite a big company. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so, you know, I just go through Queensbury now. It's way easier. Um, so I print it out and then they pack it for me and send it direct to my clients. It's just a lot easier and really good quality. Um, what do you expect from A74 and would you look at a switch to that? Uh, no, I, I don't think I'm going to switch to it unless it, like I said before, unless it has anything super uh, groundbreaking. But um, what I would expect is basically an R4 with a smaller sensor and maybe a few extra video features. Maybe, probably not, but maybe. Um, I don't think it's. I don't think the A7 IV is going to have anything drastically different to the R4. Uh, you know, I think the body will be the same. Um, It'll probably have the new menu system. I just, honest, I, what I want from the A7 IV and what Sony have to do is put a better LCD screen and a better viewfinder. The LCD screen on the A7 III, on my A7 III, I hate it. It's just trash. Um, so they really have to, they really have to upgrade that. Um, otherwise, you know, or, or if I was waiting for the A7 IV, I would just want this body the red focus point, the better SD card slots, uh, and better screens, and I'd be happy. Um, they're really fantastic cameras. So I, I think, honestly, the A7 IV is going to be a game changer, and it's going to bring a lot of people over to Sony that, you know, like they haven't already. But, yeah. Uh, Ed was saying, do you wish Sony had the option of a small, medium, raw file? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love that. Um People have been talking about that for ages. I just don't think they're going to do it, honestly. I had hope at the start, but I doubt it. If they do, I'll definitely use it, like medium raw or something. Um, but yeah, I wish. Do you spend most of your time with continuous autofocus? Yeah, I always use continuous autofocus. I I don't think I've ever used AFS in one of my cameras in the last couple of years because I'm using back button focus. I just don't. You just. I just don't need it. Um, and AFS is a little bit slow on Sony as well. It kind of hunts a little bit right before it locks. So yeah, I just use AFC all the time. Um, John, in the future, would you mind videoing your settings for the R4s? Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely going to make a setup video. A lot of things are really similar, but there's a few little tweaks and stuff I've made. So I am due for a setup video anyway, uh, and I'm going to go over some more video settings and stuff. But yeah, the video tomorrow, um, the wedding tomorrow, uh, I'll, I'll go after I've done that, I'll go through and show you guys a whole bunch of images and stuff. Um, but yeah, stoked guys. Good, good stream. Um, if you guys, you know, if you're still watching, probably a lot of you guys aren't still watching, but um, you know, my channel's not that big at the moment to do live videos, but I like to do it anyway. It's just fun to hang out and answer your guys questions um so like always i'm real open to videos uh, i don't script any of my videos or anything um they're all just kind of like last minute thoughts i have an idea and i do it and um yeah if you guys have ideas or you want me to do a video on something or a subject or anything like that let me know and uh you know i'm always happy to do that uh, I'm getting a lot of emails from YouTube now and it's a little bit difficult to reply so probably best is to either comment or uh, Instagram messages sometimes I go through and check those when I have the time and yeah man I'm looking forward to putting a lot more effort into YouTube and um, just making more content I really like helping people out and you know teaching good skills uh, and it is starting to slowly, very slowly become a viable income source. So, you know, the more you guys support my channel, a lot of you guys aren't subscribed. I, I know I get a lot of reoccurring visitors, but you don't subscribe. Uh, it really helps me out to subscribe to my channel and any support you want to give um, all goes into it. Uh, so, you know, my way of giving back is just doing less weddings and making more content for you guys. So, yeah. 
really grateful to all you following along um really been loving doing youtube uh, a couple more questions before i get out of here uh, any issues with the sigma 85 after a few weddings no nah, i haven't had a single issue with it no lockups like that i've had with the other one um fantastic focus amazing image quality good contrast handles flaring well um never had an issue with it so yeah sigma 85 1.4 don't regret switching from the g master at all i was a little bit nervous because i do love my g master um a big thing like i said in my review which i didn't even realize till i was making the review is the sigma has 11 aperture blades as well which was what made the 85 so creamy on the background so um yeah uh get us that rawsy discount code yeah, I will do that. So I'll put the Rawsy discount code in the description of this video or in the comments once it goes, once it's posted on YouTube. So check that out. Um, Mikhail, yeah, Rawsy was the uh, compression software. Honestly, it's just amazing. I don't, I don't understand how it happens. It compresses it so much, and there is just no loss in image quality. Um, you know, I. Uh, the, if you look up dot photon raw i've already done a video on it and i put raw files from uncompressed and compressed so you guys can actually go and play with them and see for yourself but it's just so fantastic um yeah uh if stoppers oh what's up team uh now that we know the iso performance of the s3 isn't any better than a7 III what will Sony remove in the next Sony bodies? <laughs> um, is it not? I, I Honestly, I haven't done side-by-side -side tests with the S3 and the A7 III. Um, I did see a few images from when I had it. You know, Sony lent me a pre-production model before it came out, but I couldn't edit the RAW files, so I couldn't really tell if there was much of a difference. Um, but straight out of the camera, I didn't see a huge amount of difference. Um, so you might be right, but uh, well, I, mean, guess, I guess you guys have done tests. So um, yeah, I think the S3 for me was more the, the reason I want to get the A7S3 is the colors. Like everybody's saying their video colors are more, you know, way more pleasing and skin tones and stuff. Um, and it'll be nice having that flip out screen because it's only going to be dedicated to YouTube. Um, so that's probably the reason I'm buying it. But uh, yeah, it's nice to have you guys along commenting. Dig the website uh you got a few more questions more drunk reviews <laughs> i don't want to comment on that but yeah <clears throat> is it worth switching for the r3 to the r4 oh man you got to go back and watch this video after i've posted it because i've gone over all that um for as I, i'm going to say as a, if i'm going to summarize the whole thing if you're a full-time professional and you can do a tax write-off and um you know you're shooting all the time I think it's worth the upgrade for sure uh, just because of all the usability and the focus and the focus point color and all that kind of little things makes it way easier to shoot and way more pleasing the bigger grip so yeah if you're a full-time professional and you're like I said you can write it off definitely uh, I think it's worth the upgrade um, otherwise probably not like you know if it's like a hobby or you're just getting into it and you know you, you're if if you didn't have just money to spend on camera gear, I don't think it's worth upgrading. Um, you know, just if you have the money and you really want to spend it, then <laughs> go for gold. Uh, but like I said, it's a business expense for me, and I am really happy with the change. Uh, but I would totally be fine shooting another season with my R3s as well. Uh, they were pretty used. I've done probably 150 weddings with my R3s so yeah well used um just wanted to say your presets are awesome oh thanks man yeah i really i still use them i have adjusted them a little bit and i'll bring new ones out uh but i don't want to just bring out crap that you know just for the money you know like i want all my presets to be really well used and um, i've had nothing but good feedback from them so i really appreciate it. and in the money you know i'm no, not kidding anybody the money does support the channel as well so i really am thankful for that but i think they are really solid presets and uh i'm always happy if people want to try them out just send me an email or a message 
and uh, send me some of your raw files and I can edit them with the presets um, and uh, you guys can see for yourself what they look like as well. Um, uh, <clears throat> thanks for the comment, Louis. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it, guys. So it's been an hour. Wow. These live videos always drag on, but they never get heaps of views. So uh, I thank all you guys for watching again. Thanks for all the comments. Um, if you guys want me to do more of these live videos, I can probably schedule them in like once a month or once every couple of weeks even. Uh, it's really cool being able to use the A7 as webcam software. It was so easy, just plug and play pretty much. So um, yeah, if you guys want more live videos, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one, man. Have fun, everybody. And... Uh, I'll, there'll probably be like three or four videos next week. So look forward to those. See you in the next one, guys.